Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video we are going to see about compartment syndrome. This is a concise presentation for medical students. Compartment syndrome is a condition in which increased pressure within one of the body's compartments results in insufficient blood supply to tissues within that compartment. Now let us see about Osteofacial compartment. Limbs contain muscles in compartments enclosed by bones, fascia, and intraosseous membrane. These are known as osteofacial compartments. Increased pressure within these compartments lead to decreased blood supply to muscles and nerves in these compartments and cause compartment syndrome. This picture shows cross section of leg. As you can see, the leg has different compartments like posterior compartment, lateral compartment and anterior compartment. This is the skin, this is the fascia, this is the tibia and this is the fibula. As you can see, the compartments contain vessels and nerves. In case of compartment syndrome, there will be swelling of muscles which cause compression of nerves and blood vessels. Now let us see about the causes of compartment syndrome. Any injury which leads to edema of muscles can cause compartment syndrome. Fracture hematoma within compartment and ischemia to compartment leading to muscle edema can cause compartment syndrome. This cycle is known as Ayrton and Green cycle for compartment syndrome. This is a vicious cycle. As you can see, trauma can cause arterial occlusion and arterial spasm. This causes muscle ischemia. Muscle ischemia causes histamine release and this leads to increased capillary permeability. The increased capillary permeability leads to intramuscular edema due to leakage of fluid into the muscles. The venous obstruction also contributes to the intramuscular edema. This intramuscular edema leads to a rise in the intramuscular pressure. This causes venous, lymphatic and arterial compression and the cycle continues. Vasospastic antidromic reflex also contributes to arterial occlusion and arterial spasm. Remember, this cycle is known as Ayrton and Green cycle for compartment syndrome and this shows the pathogenesis of compartment syndrome. Now let us see about the consequences of compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome can lead to ischemic muscle necrosis. The necrotic muscles undergo healing with fibrosis leading to contractures. Contracture is a permanent shortening of muscle or joint. Compartment syndrome can lead to nerve damage and can cause motor and sensory loss. In extreme cases, compartment syndrome can cause gangrene. Now let us see about the diagnosis of compartment syndrome. A high index of suspicion is required to diagnose compartment syndrome early. Some cases are more prone to develop compartment syndrome. These are known as high risk cases. These include supracondylar fracture of humerus, forearm bone fractures, closed tibial fractures and crush injuries to leg and forearm. These injuries are more prone to develop Compartment syndrome. Now let us see about the symptom in compartment syndrome. Excessive pain is the main symptom in compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome should be suspected when there is excessive pain which is not relieved with usual doses of analgesics in a patient with an injury known to cause compartment syndrome. Now let us see about the signs of compartment syndrome. Stitch test is the earliest sign of compartment syndrome. The principle is that ischemic muscles produce pain when stretched. This can be elicited by passively moving the joints in a direction opposite to that of the damaged muscles action. For example, passive extension of fingers produces pain in flexor compartment of forearm in case of compartment syndrome of forearm. Other signs of compartment syndrome include tense compartment, hypoesthesia and muscle weakness 
of the areas supplied by the involved nerves. Compartment pressure greater than 40 mm of water points to compartment syndrome. Remember, pulses will be palpable till very late in compartment syndrome. So, presence of pulses does not rule out compartment syndrome. Now, let us see about the management of compartment syndrome. For prevention of compartment syndrome, a close watch for impending compartment syndrome is necessary. Limb elevation and active finger movements can prevent compartment syndrome. Once compartment syndrome is established, the treatment of choice is early surgical decompression. It can be done by fasciotomy. In this, deep fascia of the compartment is slit longitudinally and the compartment pressure is brought down. This can be done in case of compartment syndrome of forearm. Early surgical decompression can also be done by fibulectomy. In this, middle third of fibula is excised to decompress all compartments of leg. This can be done in case of compartment syndrome of leg. This picture shows fasciotomy. As you can see, the deep fascia of the compartment is slit longitudinally so that the compartment pressure is brought down. Remember, when the pressure is down, the fasciotomy is covered with skin graft. This picture shows fibulectomy. As you can see, the middle third of fibula is excised in order to decompress all compartments of the leg. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe and tell your friends about this channel. Thank you.